Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be hanging out with our pal Skip and he's going to show us an easy and relatively inexpensive way to make a food plot. Before we get into Skip's video and him showing us how to make a food plot, I just want to get into some scripture. Um, today we're going to be in John 3.16 and uh, before we jump into that scripture, let's just pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Bible. I thank you for leaving your word behind so that we would have instructions on how we are to live on this earth. And Lord, I just pray as I discuss your word today that these words would be heard in a manner that's glorifying to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, a uh, very popular verse, and uh, the meaning behind it is relatively simple. Um, if you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. If you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you have eternal life. But there's something else I want to discuss with it, and that's this. So many people in this world, because of all the troubles that we're having, um, I see non-believers saying all the time, well, if God loved the world, then why doesn't he do something? Why doesn't he make all this stuff, stuff stop? And... The answer is this, God did do something. He sent Jesus. He sent Jesus who died on the cross for our sins so we can have eternal life in heaven with him. Our heaven is not here. That's the answer, it's up there. So accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you will have heaven, you will go to heaven and you will be with him and you will have eternal life. Stop focusing on this world and focus on that world focus on Christ and your troubles are going to make a lot more sense because you're going to understand that you are not living for this world. You're living for him when you become a believer. And uh, with that, here's Skip and Alrighty. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, today we're going to come out. Uh, I do things a little different. A lot of people argue with me. They till their food pots. They disc them and they they're working all the time some people buy tractors a whole bit I started out with really very little I had a little pump what is it two, two three gallon pump spray and I'd spray and kill off everything with kills all I'd rake it I was doing everything by hand now I didn't buy any tractors anything expensive I borrow my kids four-wheeler I, I spray the feet the we grind in the food plots first, you know, with the, the grinder, heavy equipment, pay a guy to come out and cut something into the woods. And uh, after that, everybody argues, but I don't till it or, or uh, anything. I just leave it as it is. Here we have the buckwheat in. I came in in the spring, what started to grow. I have the spray bar on the wheeler. I killed it off with the kills all. And then after that, I come in uh, oh, a couple weeks later and I'll put the buckwheat in. You see the buckwheat here. That comes in pretty thick and it, uh, it pretty much shades out and keeps any weeds from growing. And it's super moist. I mean, look at that. That's just super moist. So instead of, I mean, look at these. The seeds are so small, you really don't have to put them into the ground. You don't have to till them. You don't have to go over it with a drag anything you put those in with this spreader they're gonna grow you don't have to put them into the ground what i'm gonna do is seed in to this buckwheat take this buckwheat sometimes i mix up i call it brassica but i'm gonna seed the brassica into the buckwheat here then once i seed it in i come by with the wheeler i have just packed it with wheeler tires i have a cult of packer I'm gonna pack it right in. This stuff is gonna lay down right on top of the seeds. If we hit a drought, as this rots and the moisture in it, it covers the seeds up and the seeds are gonna grow right through it. The, the brassica seeds will grow right through it. Uh, you can see some of the deer nibbling the tops of these. Deer don't hit it too heavy, but they'll come through. It's something for them to eat. But this is super, super moist. When I come through it, a cult packer snaps and breaks it off lays down flat right over the seed and uh, uh, this came decent I, half my food plot is going to be brassica you can see up where the clover was that's where 
the brassica was last year. I switched back and forth. That'll be where I put my my uh, winter rye later. Right? What's this? Uh, what's this? August August third or fourth, whatever. Yep. I'm gonna put the the brassica in here the next few days to a couple different food plots. I'm gonna seed it in. Uh, I'm gonna crank it, pack it down with a culta packer, and uh, then I'll come in. And I'm going to spray this with the kills all once over, get whatever weeds are still left. And then I leave it. And I'll, later, I'll come in in a couple weeks. I'll put the uh, winter rye up where the clover is now. So, yeah, I'll just seed this in. You want to watch for a second, and here's what we do. Okay, I took, I spun in our broadcast, they want to call it, all my brassica seeds in where I have my buckwheat. And uh, like I say, I don't touch or till anything because every time you till it or grind it, you spring it up seeds from 20 years ago maybe, the dormant weeds. So once I, I kill this off a few times, I never really have to uh, come in and keep spraying all the time. I just let let it do itself because uh, the winter rye has something in it. If you plant winter rye, you won't get any weeds growing through it. I mean, it seems to kill everything around it. That's why where I had the brassica, you see all the clover. But where I, where I had the winter rye, you, there's very few weeds. So I switch back and forth. One time I'll have winter rye where I have the brassica. Okay, I seed it into this, all my brassica, and uh, I take the wheeler, put the pulch packer on back, I'll pull up that you can take a look at it. And I'm going to pack it all down, and it's going to have all that green, super moist. Like I said, these stems, you can just see the moisture in them. Super moist vegetation laying on top of all the seed. The seed doesn't have to be put in the ground. It knows where to throw its root. Uh, again, it's a whole different ball game for some people they're, they're used to that tilling and you know that's fine you got the equipment you want to do that that's your business but I find just coming along seeding into this packing it down walking away and I'll show you pictures from last year I mean a super drought it's one thing with brassica or uh, with buckwheat I should say that buckwheat laid on the ground over the seeds throws moisture. I mean, look at the drought we had last year. Everybody that was disking and tilling, man, they had powder. I just laid it on that dry, bare ground, knocked this buckwheat on top of it, and I'll show you the pictures. You know, we'll put uh, post some pictures of uh, the brassica I got. I mean, <laughs> it really came good. It blew me away. So I, I was fretting all summer. I thought, that drought's going to kill everything. It's Nothing's going to grow. But Hey, it worked out anyway. Uh, so I'm going to pack this down now, what I seeded it in. Um, hey, kind of a funny deal. I must have got corn, a couple kernels of corn. I got corn growing right in front of me here that I didn't plant. Yet on the other property, I was bent over backwards, poking holes in the ground, hand planting corn. And hey, it's coming. I got rows, crooked rows of corn coming, but eh, with no effort, there's corn. Looks better than what I planted. But okay, I'm gonna take off now and uh, I'll pack this down here. Um, uh, I'll pull ahead a little bit and you can take a look at the cult packer. Hey, I, again, you don't have to spend on a cult packer. It's just, I did, I saved my money, that's what I spend on. You could do this so cheap. Wheeler, spray bar, that's it. No tilling, no tractors. You know, it's up to you the way you want to do it. Like I say, in the past, I would just take one of those little pump deals, mix my kills all in it. I'd spray an area. I cut with a chainsaw, open up a small food plot in the woods. They, they were pretty small. Nothing like this is a decent size one here. I just put two really decent ones in on the other property that are pretty doggone big. So, uh, 
But there you have it. Uh, I'll pack it down now and let nature take its course. Got there. There's a picture of the bulk packer. You can see where I came through, just riding through. That buckwheat just snaps so easy. It, you know, it gets that good, moist, wet stem and a thing that just walking through it packs it down. So, anyways, good enough. I'll whip around a little bit here. We have uh, our buckwheat here where the brass will be going. We seed it up on the far end of the food plot. I'll be packing that down too. This isn't the best buckwheat I ever had, but hey, it'll do that. sit down when I do this. I get so motocross. <laughs> uh, did that all my life as a young guy so every time I'm on something I'm standing but yeah uh, so there you have it. The buckwheat's packed down. You can see how it's uh, laying over the seed and such and now it's pretty much leave it alone. I'll come in spray everything kind of knock that clover back a little bit when I come in a few weeks to get my uh, Went to rye in the plant. Okay, hey, there you, here you have it. The stuff's laying on the ground, you know, wet. Nice, moist, wet. It's gonna stay that way. It's gonna rot right on top of the seed and give it nutrients. You don't have to till the soil to get nutrients into the ground. It leaches in. It's gonna be right with these seeds. All those little brassica seeds are underneath this stuff. Just kind of waiting to come through. And uh, like I say, for the guy that doesn't have all the equipment, maybe you're on public land and you find an open spot in the woods, hey, a rake, a little spray, plant some buckwheat, kill it off, and you got yourself a food plot without having to even buy a four-wheeler. Ain't not gonna be as big or whatever, maybe as some people's, but you see some people, uh, the money they put into tractors and, and uh, uh, discs and tilling equipment and Hey, if that's if you have the money for it, that's okay. But this works for me just perfectly fine. I got the proof. I'll show you the pictures. And it's not like my idea. I'm just uh, there's a whitetail habitat solution. If you look that up on the internet. That guy there, man. When I first started watching him, I thought no way. Wanted to write, argue with him, <laughs> email him. He's wrong. Everything that guy talked about hunting is just. He knocks out all the old wives' tales and the old hunting stories and. All, all that, he just kind of sticks to the facts and the science of it. And he's the one that I got the snow-till food plots from. I mean, they got all that clover, which some people think, ooh, that's great, cut it and it'll come back. But clover itself, particularly if you're, if you're rifle hunting, hey, the stuff is gone and shriveled and pretty much nothing is hitting it by the end of September if you get a couple frosts. You get your brassica in, uh, that's gonna last it's gonna it stays green like frozen cabbage right into right through to November in the winter rye heck they'll paw at that and dig at it and it stays green right under the snow and winter rye doesn't quit growing even at 35 degrees it keeps it keeps growing I mean you can't beat a cold winter you know if you're late and your brassica is not working hey throw a bunch of winter rye on it and that stuff will keep growing at, 38 degrees, 35 degrees, it'll keep growing. So, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of people like the clover in the spring and, and such. Uh, to me, clover is great because it throws a lot of nutrients in the ground, seems to keep the ground moist. I'll cut that or spray it and I'll put my winter rye into it and man, it'll come up because that clover, yeah, it's almost like buckwheat, you know, it keeps the ground moist and, and such. And especially like in the spring, it's there and uh, they can't beat food plots for turkey hunting either. You know, the thing with winter rye is that stuff comes up 
It dies out by June generally, I find. But it comes up first thing when that snow is gone, it starts coming up. You get the deer in there and the, uh, the clover and winter rye coming up. You get turkeys right up there. I'd set up a blind. I've got three turkeys over the years right on this little food plot here. And this is a small food plot, really. I guess it's, you know, some people might call it big, but uh, putting a few real big ones in on the other property now. And we packed all that down just today, uh, seeded it, packed it. That really had some good buckwheat growth on it. That was really looking good. That's, uh, but I already did that before the camera came. So <laughs> had to settle for this food plot here. But you get the idea, you see what it's all about. So thanks. Thank you.